let's say I had the dynamical system xn plus 1 equals 1 1.5 xn times 1 minus xn. Let's find the equilibria. We plug in xn plus 1 and xn equal the same value, let's say e. We're looking for a value of the state variables which stays the same under the dynamical system. When we do that, we get e equals 1.5 e times 1 minus e, which we can expand out as 1.5 e minus 1.5 e squared. Subtracting e from both sides, we get 0.5e left, because we get 1.5e minus e, and then minus 1.5e squared. We can factor out the e to determine that the equilibria are e equals 0, the first factor is 0, or 0 0.5 minus 1.5e equals 0. This latter case is 0 if e equals 0 0.5 divided by 1.5, which is 1 third. So the equilibria are e equals 0 and 1 third. The question is, are these equilibria stable? Let's check via cobwebbing. And let's see if we can recall a relationship between the stability and the tangent line. Remember that an equilibrium is stable if you start nearby and it stays nearby or even gets closer. An equilibrium is unstable if, no matter how close you start to it, it still moves away. Here's a cobwebbing plot of this dynamical system. We can see the two equilibria, one at zero and one at a third. This applet allows us to fit tangent lines around the equilibria, so let's do that. Let's click on Find E and then click near the equilibrium. And it found the equilibrium at zero, E equals zero, and fit a tangent line of slope one and a half. Since the slope is greater than one, we can know that the equilibrium is unstable. If we start really close and iterate, we move away from either side. What about the equilibrium at one third? Here the slope is one half. Since it's between zero and one, we know the equilibrium is stable. The trajectory approaches one third. What happens if we increase this coefficient, this 1.5, to 2.5? Now we need to shrink the applet to find the equilibrium. Let's check the slope at zero. It's 2.5. It must be unstable since it's greater than 1. What's the slope at the larger equilibrium? This equilibrium is 0 0.6. And we see that the slope is negative 1 half. Since the slope is between minus 1 and 1, again it's stable, but notice how it oscillates around the equilibrium before spiraling in. We get that when we have a negative slope. Let's increase the coefficient even further to 3.5. Our upper equilibrium got larger again. Let's see what it is. It's 0 0.7 something, and now the slope is negative 1.5. Since this slope is less than negative 1, the equilibrium is unstable and spirals outward. We can understand these results because the tangent line equals a linear approximation of the function. This means we get a good approximation of the behavior of the system near the equilibrium using its tangent line. In the applet, you could zoom in and see how close the graph of the function is to the graph of the tangent line, and see how, if you cobwebbed using the tangent line, 
you'd get almost the same result as if you cobwebbed using the function itself. So let's remind ourselves of the results using a linear system. If we had a dynamical system, xn plus 1 equals rxn, nice simple linear system, we have one equilibrium, and that's xn equals 0, or e equals 0 if you like. And we know how to determine whether or not this equilibrium is stable. If r is greater than 1, then we get exponential growth, and we know the equilibrium is unstable. No matter how close we start to zero, as long as we don't start at zero, we're going to grow exponentially away from zero, the equilibrium. On the other hand, if r is between zero and one, then the equilibrium is stable. We have exponential decay, and if we start near zero, we're going to decay down toward zero. Well, what happens for negative values? If r is between minus one and zero, then the equilibrium is stable again. In this case, the trajectory spirals in. But it's still stable as the trajectory gets closer and closer to zero. On the other hand, if r is less than negative one, then the equilibrium is unstable. The trajectory spirals outward, away from the equilibrium. And it's okay if r is equal to zero too, so let's change this when r is equal to zero, we get to the equilibrium x equals zero in one step. These are our conclusions for a linear system. What about for a nonlinear system? A nonlinear system could have zero, one, or many equilibria. We'll call them xn equals the number e. To look at the stability of the equilibria, we use the same results as the linear system. The only difference is that we use the slope of the tangent line rather than the number r. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative evaluated at e, so translating the above conclusions, we know that f prime of e is greater than one. This implies the equilibrium is unstable. And this applies just for the equilibrium xn equals e, because f prime of e is the slope of the tangent line evaluated around that equilibrium. If we have multiple equilibria, we need to test the derivative at each of them. If the derivative is between zero and one, just as in the linear case, this implies that the equilibrium is stable. If the slope of the tangent line is negative, we get spiraling behavior. If it's greater than negative one, then the equilibrium is stable. And as in the linear case, the trajectory spirals in, at least once you get close enough to the equilibrium so that the linear approximation is valid. And if the derivative is less than negative one, the equilibrium is unstable, and the trajectory spirals outward. And again, this just works because if we're close to the equilibrium, the nonlinear system acts like the linear system where f prime of e is the slope of the tangent line, so it's the slope of a linear approximation. We can summarize these results in an even easier way. We can summarize it into two cases. If the absolute value of the derivative, f prime of e, is less than one, then we're in one of these two cases, then the equilibrium is stable. On the other hand, if the absolute value of the derivative evaluated at the equilibrium is greater than one, then we're in one of these two cases. And this means that the equilibrium is unstable. So to determine the stability of an equilibrium for a dynamical system of the form xn plus one equals f of xn, you just need to compute the derivative of f, evaluate the derivative at the equilibrium, and see whether or not it is greater than one in absolute value. Of course, we've excluded one case here. What happens if f prime of e is equal to one? Or f prime of e is equal to negative one? Well, if this happens, then the test fails. We don't have enough information to tell if it's stable or unstable. We cannot tell what is going to happen from just the derivative f prime of e.
Now there are methods to figure out in this case if it is stable or unstable, but we're not going to worry about them. If we find that the derivative is 1 or negative 1, we'll just conclude that we don't know if the equilibrium is stable or unstable. So let's imagine I had a dynamical system xn plus 1 equals f of xn, where the graph of f is this blue curve. I can immediately find the equilibria, which are the points where the graph intersects the diagonal, which I've drawn by this green line. I can quickly see that these two equilibria are unstable, because here f prime of e has to be greater than 1. Given that the slope of the diagonal is 1, and the slope of the function is greater than the diagonal at those points. At this first equilibrium, it looks like the derivative, well, it's negative, but it's pretty shallow, so it's probably greater than negative 1. So that means the equilibrium is stable. At this middle equilibrium, however, the function's pretty steep. So I imagine that f prime is probably less than negative 1 here, which means it must be unstable. And at the top equilibrium, the slope is still positive, but it's small. So I imagine that f prime of e is between 0 and 1, which means it's stable. So we have two stable equilibria and three unstable equilibria. You can try cobwebbing to verify that that is true. The nice thing about this approach is that we can determine stability of equilibria just by looking at the graph of the updating function.